Good morning. There's still a glow of sunrise in the sky there. I'm still at Black Sheep Farm in County Kilkenny. And uh, let's zoom out a little. Going to feed the rams, but first I'll show you this. The tree surgeons were here yesterday. And uh, this old horse chestnut died completely. So it had to come down because it's too close to buildings and other trees to even just let it, you know, be there for wildlife. And nothing was living in it, so that's what's left. And Tom was here, so we got some of the a really lovely couple big pieces of wood which we're going to make into things. Someone was saying that horse chestnut doesn't burn very well. So, uh, I don't know. But uh, it's definitely going to be special to have it in our cottage as an item. Yeah. And we have a lot of babies from this horse chestnut tree, actually. We are taking home two new ones. Well, it mightn't be from this horse chestnut, but I have some that I took a couple years ago from in here, and it's growing at our cottage. So that's fun. Okay, let's go feed the rams. So if you watched the first vlog that I did from here this October, I came in, my first walk in was around that side. And I was talking about the smell of the apples. And this morning I've come in this way and I particularly smell the pears. And it's such a sweet smell. My goodness. It's lovely. And I love this. This is a new space that just got put together like this. I think this summer. And it's done really, really well. Because we were, I think she was telling me about it when I was here in February, March for the lambing. And uh, yeah, and of course most of it's finished now, but you can see the evening primrose is still going. And there were a lot of verbascums as well. So I'm gonna get several seed heads. This is a, just a haven for insects, I'm sure. And then birds with seed heads. I think they like the seed heads of the evening primrose. A lot of um, women, you might know evening primrose as evening primrose oil. That has the, um, it's one of the omega oils in it. And uh, it can be very good for regulating your cycle. Or something to do with the cycle. I used to take it, now I don't cycle anymore. But um, I think it was meant to help with cramps if you were missing that oil in your yeah that's the plant that's what it looks like the flower bears with me bear stays with me in the cottage when I'm here the boys are they're here already it's a cool morning in Fahrenheit it's probably about 44 so what's that in Celsius? Probably about five. Hi, boys. I'm going to get your food. Just wait a minute. They're all stand and looking at me, but then I get out the phone and they're like, oh no, we don't. We don't want to be filmed. Except that's, perhaps that's Big Ears, who seems to remember me. And his ears aren't so big anymore because he's grown into them. But we're missing... We're missing some sh sheep, so I have a feeling they're around the corner in the shed, so we'll go look. They are. Come on! It's breakfast! It's breakfast time! Yeah! Hello! Hi, sweets! What have I got? I don't have the breakfast yet. I was just making sure no one had gone walkies. Hello, big ears. I'll give you a scratch. I'll put this down. The doves are coming for their breakfast.
Yummy in the tummy. Tom's got his friends. He's got a lovely neck warmer there. Look at that. Snuggled right in herself. An oven mitt. Don't don't be getting the cat hair and cat saliva too near Tom. He'll be itchy. Not concerned. Meow meow meow. Meow 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 meow. Meow 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 meow. Oh, bears come in. Hello. Oh, here comes Inca. it. What did you think, Inca? Did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy the music? No, there's that French kissing dog. I was filming and he stuck his tongue in my mouth. How did you do that? Autumnal indeed. Yes. And all the crows are being noisy. Let's to feed the chickens. I'm not feeding them any scraps right now because the crows are everywhere. So I'll come back later when all the crows are away and give them their their food scraps but they're getting their bucket of feed now. This is probably the fanciest chicken house, chicken yard ever. <laughs> These would be, they're finishing up but it's perennial, perennial pink sweet pea and then this, this is what that flower looks like. And uh, passion flower all over it. Hello girls. Hello girls. And of course it's October so it's not in full. You can see all the ones that had flowered. Made one or two fruit this year. Okay. Hey ladies. They're super friendly. Yeah. Okay. I'll put this down and come feed you. You can see the mist now. There's the horses and the ponies. Kind of down that way. Do you want some apples? I have to throw the apples, they don't really know what I'm doing. Come on. These are just some apples falling. Come on, yeah. Apples. There's one, you see it? I threw that one, yeah. Come on, here comes Miss Daisy Rose. Tiny little Daisy Rose. Marco's probably a bit down farther. Hi. Hi. Meow. Meow. There's a little one for Miss Daisy. There you go, Miss Daisy. Hi, Grasshopper. Okay, Mama Ishka. There we go. Yeah. I'll, I'll put down the phone and I'll feed you. Yeah, lovelies. Oh, it rains. Sounds like it's getting to start a little more. This is the main orchid. Orchid. Orchard. It's <laughs> a lot of lo lovely apples in here. Getting ready to call the boys. So they get to eat all these apples that drop. Very nice. It's, I think that's an enormous puffball mushroom. Let's look before I. So many lovely apples for the lads. 
Look at these mushrooms. Look at these apples. That's from when Susan's grand Susan's. Why do I that my name is Susan, she's Susanna. Ooh, I was up at five o'clock, so her grandparents were market gardeners, so these trees are for them. Look at these enormous puffball mushrooms. Like there's my foot. There's loads of them. And that shows, shows really good soil life and symbiosis. Okay, let me call the boys. So they're on the shed there. They're kind of looking at me, but they're they're like, I think it's breakfast, but yep. Come on, boys. Here they come. Come on, boys. Yeah, she's, he's, they're like, she's in the wrong position. Yep. Yeah, but don't come to me because I don't, <laughs> I did say come on, boys, didn't I? But I meant come on to dinner. That was big ears. He always comes up to me. Yeah, that's empty. Yeah, it was, yep, it was a cruel hoax. Sorry, big ears. Come on, boys. Come on to din dins. Come on, boys. There they go. There goes big ears. That's big ears there on the right. See how he is a big boy. There they go. Yummy breakfast for rams and weathers. Hello friends. I just thought I wanted to show you a few things in this really it's the slow life and knitting vlog. I'm still here at Black Sheep Farm. Sorry, a Tom just rang me and of course I do everything on my phone. So I just wanted to um yeah, give you a little update on this finished project and what I'm doing at the minute. Today is Wednesday. Tomorrow is the first day of the Stephen West Twist and Turns MCAL. I'm so thrilled. I got this project off my needle. And there's a little bit of a story I'll tell you in a minute. But also I was watching Mars of Hay Brownberry. And she is uh, doing showing you this book, Charming Color Work Socks by Charlotte Stone. And I'm, if you haven't seen this video yet and seen this book, go check it out. They, are, If you're like me and you love, you know, all these sort of little whimsical patterns, which is one of the things I kind of missed when I stopped buying, you know, socks, is that you can get socks and all these cute patterns. And before I took the plunge and learned color work there through that, um, the, you know, the um, hat I did with Ellie by Ellie of Curio Stitches. What's the name of that hat? Brain Fart. It's a rune hat. The casting runes hat. <laughs> yeah. No, the Norn rune spread hat, which is part of the casting runes collection. Sorry. So, and then I realized, you know, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> it wasn't as bad as I thought. Now, with socks, of course, I'm going to have to, you know, really pay attention to the tension and stuff. And I will start off with just two color. Because there's a whole lot. I bought the book. Make Long story short, I bought the book. It's not actually out here in Ireland yet. I think it comes out in November, but I happen to be a bold girl and it was available in the US on Kindle. And now I still have an Amazon account there and I have, I use the Kindle app. That meant I could be, you know, totally impatient and get it straight away. <laughs> so that's what I've done. Um, so I will be definitely doing some of those really cute sock patterns. And he has been happily sleeping right, right there until I got out my knitting. I mean, literally, I did like three stitches and he woke up and he's here on the knitting now, I'll admit. Every time I get my knitting out, he has to come sit on it. See, we don't have cats at home and our dogs aren't interested in knitting. Is this just... How many of you guys have this kind of cat thing? I mean, he's not interested in the yarn or anything. He just, he's like, oh, there's something cozy happening. Now he's just licking my hand and chewing. He loves to chew my fingernails. Anyway, yeah. Knitting and feline problems. Yeah, kissy kiss. I mean, look at him. He's right on it. At least he's not clawing it, he's just clawing. Look. Gets right on it. Parks himself, goes to sleep. Doesn't, you know, kind of lay up here where there's not any knitting. Nope. 
puts his big belly on it. Happy, content face. Love the wool. It's very soft wool. Yeah. I'm trying to inch it away from him. I'm trying to pull it. But he keeps... Oh, maybe this time I'll be successful. <laughs> Telling me stop. I want to lay on it. <laughs> what do you do in oven mitt? Let Auntie Susan have the wool. Oh, look at that. We can't have that. That's a claw out. And ow! Well, you, you don't want me to take it away, do you not? No, no, oh no, claws in it. No. <laughs> Give me that. Purring the whole time. Oh, look, I might actually get it. Oh, hey, woo, success. Now you can see a bit of the remains of the sunrise. Yeah, that's lovely. It's gonna be a clear morning. Lovely, so you can, there's the newish seating area. Yeah, isn't that lovely? That's where we were sitting on my first October vlog that you might have seen all the dahlias around it. This is a gladiolus acanthus I think. I, I might be wrong I don't remember everything anymore but this is sort of like the wild um, you know the original gladiolus so a lot of people know the real fancy gladioli but this is this is a sort of a more hardy one. It's really beautiful and kind of delicate looking, you know? So pretty. It's covered in little dew drops, but it's not quite light up enough now for my camera. Uh, you know this food, do you? You ready? You hungry? Goodness me. Should have paid attention. <laughs> Ooh, there's some really pretty ones. You hear the sheep? It's the main bunch of ewes up on the hill there. Here comes the alpaca. So yeah. So as you can see behind me, well you can see one, but there are several. Yeah. I hope nobody I'm right behind an alpaca butt. So, <laughs> that could be a little dangerous. I don't want any excrement <laughs> to come my place. Those are some noises there, ladies. <laughs> Hello. Hello. What you doing? Can you come over here? Hello. Alpacas. We might get a visitor. Hi. Welcome to the knitting section. <laughs> knitting. Was that the trigger word? They are like, yeah, we make yarn. They do. 
the, the sheep and the alpaca here are uh, spun into yarn. Their fleeces are spun into yarn and also into blankets. Um, that it's spun right down the road here at the traditional woolen mill at Glendamana. We're in County Kilkenny at Black Sheep Farm, home of the Svartblas Ireland, um, Susanna and her Svartblas sheep, which aren't a traditional Irish breed, but they thrive here. So, and they're black sheep, and Susanna's alpacas are black as well. And uh, we've got the three alpacas in here, and Ebony, who is a sweetie, and I'm helping Susanna with the farm for a couple weeks as she recovers from surgery. So, um, yes, and Ebony, I noticed Ebony had some fly strikes, so she had to get treated for that, and she's just in here. We're keeping an eye on her, but she's doing great, aren't you, girl? Yeah, Ebony's a great sheep. She's, I've been knowing Ebony many years, and she knows me as well. So, yeah, so she's a lot friendlier. These alpaca are, they aren't real spooky, but they aren't, like, they might come over later and see us, but anyways. So I wanted to sit down here and just give you a little overview of what knitting I'm doing. So today is October, I think it's the 8th. Yes, because it's Saturday and Thursday was Knitter's Christmas Eve. Knitter's Christmas of uh, the Steve and West MCAL started the first clue. So at the end of this knitting section, and I'll put up the spoiler picture, or the warning, um, I'm going to show you how far I've gotten on my Stephen West Twist and, Cow, Twist and Turns M Cow project, um, which isn't real, real far because we had some lovely friends come over yesterday. It was fantastic to see them all. So that most of the day was spent with that. That's fine. Okay, I'll give you another little look at my finished object. Well, I actually have two and you haven't seen that one. But this is the Drop Dead Freddy uh, jumper by Cat Weaver of Heather and Hops, and it's done. And I'll give it, a, give you a good look at it on my body. I'll insert a picture of it on Tom. It looks really nice on Tom, but he just feels that since he gained an inch and a half from all the building work that he was doing between the last time I'd measured him <laughs> and when the jumper was finished, because I was like, why is it? so snug. I mean, we wanted it to be closer fitting, not with all the ease that you can have in the pattern. But I was like, why is it quite so tight? And he'd gained an inch and a half. It's really kind of tight here. If I'd left it as a vest, as you might have seen it when I did podcast, I think it was 22 or something, that would have been fine. But it was when it I picked up here. And I think I, I did probably get tighter on the smaller circular needles. I have, I am a tight knitter and I have a tendency as I go along to get tighter. So my project bag there full of knitting to show you is there. Yeah. Hello. Hi. They like to smell your hair. Yeah. I'm having a brain fart and I can't remember anybody's names of the alpacas. She's snipping my hand. Hey. Hey. That's why I wanted to film in this this barn shed because I thought we might have fun visitors. Yeah, yeah. Can you say hi to the people? They're in there. In there? I don't know where you are. It's in there. Okay, what was I saying? So yes, so I so this is a pattern that's going to be released probably later this month in October. And it's knit at a nice loose gauge. And I've used fingering weight held with mohair and also mohair held double, which is how the pattern is set out. And you can stripe a different thicknesses or not. Um, and yeah, so, and you finish off your collar and your hem and your, your cuffs with an I-cord bind off. But because I was making it for Tom and I wanted it to be easy to modify to make it a bit longer, and to do different things with the collar, I just bound off um, just the regular sort of knitted bind off because that's easier to pull apart. And I only did the cuffs. It's the first time I'd ever done it, so it's not great. But yeah, it's really nice. I love it because with the mohair, it's really warm, but because it's a loose gauge, it's not too hot and I tend to run hot. But And I did a size five. But I think I was saying as often times as I get my gauge on the swatch but kind of as I go farther into the knitting I just I, 
I tend to tighten up unconsciously. So it's kind of, that's probably why sometimes my gauge swatches lie because once I kind of get through the first quarter of a project, I just tighten up and don't realize. Hi. So the, here it is on me and that's just my regular bind off. And, uh, let me see what's happening here. You like that project? Hi. Hi. So let's move this back a little and we will, um, oops, let's see. Okay. So it comes to on me. Now I knit it. So I, sorry, I knit a size five. Tom would, would have been a size five, but really he should be, he's now he's a size six and I would kind of knit a size, probably a size four if I didn't want to have a lot of ease. <laughs> and so I think, but as I got tighter, I probably ended up down here more of a size three. And I didn't knit it quite as long once we realized that Tom didn't he didn't feel comfortable with it as a jumper i didn't because i had stopped it kind of early to just gauge the length so i didn't add it on so it's a little bit shorter than what the pattern says maybe by an inch or so so on me it's hitting here's my hip bone that's hitting me right there which i like and um excuse me ma'am oh. and uh so it's i mean it's got the ease but it you know, it, it also is that bit more fitted. There's just my regular collar without the eye cord. I didn't buy, bother putting on the eye cord bind up because truthfully, this goes over my head, but not super loosely. So I just, I just left it as it is because I'm just so happy with it. And everyone that sees it just loves it. And this, the fingering weight yarn is a Robin's Promise yarn in the colorway Crim Dow. And then the mohair is a thrift, a thrifted find. Uh, held double and um, I'll put little pictures of the colorways in here and yeah so I'm really happy with it and this pattern probably be coming out soon in the pattern which I didn't do because I was knitting for Tom there would be drop stitches which you can add here or anywhere she gives you guidelines of where it might be good to add a drop stitch or where it's probably not good and she's also doing video support for the drop stitches and also there's a split hem and a longer, quite longer in the back if you want to do that. And there's directions for that. But because I had originally tended it for Tom and he didn't want those things, I didn't put those in. And Kat was so lovely. She, you know, she was totally fine with, you know, not following the pattern specifically because we want to kind of see how it would do on a male body with more broad shoulders. So, um, yeah, I hope that experiment worked a little. Maybe it didn't work as much as it should have because he got bulkier as time went on. But anyway, but yeah, so the pattern was easy to follow. It was a fun knit. It's partially knitted flat with a drop shoulder and then you join in the round. And you know, it goes quickly. It's on big needles and it just, it's, I really like it and I'm gonna wear it loads. And with the mohair, even though I've been wearing it to do some farm work, it's pretty sturdy. So yeah, mohair is strong. Okay, so there's that. And then I have another finished object. Let's adjust the camera to show you that. I'll pause this. Okay, my second finished object is the Ghost Knitter Shawl, which is a Halloween pattern just released, um, well, a couple weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago, by Amber O'Brien. And now it's finished, but it's not blocked. I've washed it and hung it, but I haven't blocked out the lace because I'm here. I don't have blocking mats or pins or anything. Also, just before I show you, I did stop it. I was about six rows from the finish and there was a bit of a knitting disaster. Uh, this one, Tom was here. I think I might've mentioned this on one of the vlogs, but um, yeah, the kettle was boiling. I carefully put down the knitting um, and I went over to take the kettle off the fire and Tom came out and said, oh, you have yarn wrapped around your foot. Well, somehow, yeah, I got in between the knitting and the yarn ball and I unraveled about a uh, two and a half repeats. And I had a lifeline on, but it was 
too far back to really be any help. So keep track of your lifelines, people. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, because it was all in the lace stuff. And I was like, I, I can't even. So I just picked up the stitches as best I could. I didn't even know if I could save it. But I just picked them up and just kind of knit them regular. I was in the, it was like somewhere like here, right in the very middle of the shawl. Um, so then I just finished working in pattern and then I did the plain pearl row and then I just bound off because I just, I knew if I, I couldn't continue the pattern because it would look wrong, but I was nearly near the end anyway. And thankfully I'd already finished the pumpkins or the skulls. So let me put that on over. So just so you can see that. So yeah, now it's over something dark and obviously when I block it, that will stop curling, but you can see the pumpkin faces, the skull faces, and um, it's just really lovely. And again, I, I actually, because I'm, I can be such a tight knitter, the recommended needle, I believe, was 3.75. And I was like, I was knitting along, and I was like, why is this shawl looking so small? And I looked at my gauge, and it was so... It was so tight, so I went up to a 4.0 for a few rows, and it was still tight. So I actually went up to the four and a half millimeter needle, and uh, was trying to knit really loosely. But you can't—I don't think you can really tell um, that then. It, you know, the gauge just got looser, but otherwise it was going to be so small. And so, yeah. So that's the thing for me. And this main colorway is by Fine Leaf Fibers, and she's a dyer here in Ireland in Cork, and of course she ships internationally. Lovely colors. This is a Halloween-y one called Fire Pit. And then this one was another thrifted pine called Maple Leaves. And I can't remember the dyer, but I'll put up, I don't know if that person's still dying, you know, because it came from the thrift shop. And I'll put this on so you can kind of get the size. I'm sh I would say the size, if you knit it, you know, not as a tight knitter, you knit the regular gauge, it's probably um, not a hugely amount bigger than this, I'm not certain. Right, so, here we are. So this, and I'm just under, I thought I was just under five foot three, but I've apparently shrunk in the past however many years. So I'm just under five foot two, <laughs> that helps you. This is coming down. To my sort of my knee as how long this ended up and of course you can wear it like this with your shawl pin or not or you can obviously a lot of people wear it like this and sometimes I wear things like that but I find I I like shawls a lot of times around my shoulder to keep me warm but yeah that's lovely as well and there's the the pumpkin skulls that uh, will obviously be much nicer when you can block it properly. But it was a fun knit. The first bit is super easy and mindless. And then, of course, with the lace and the skulls, you have to pay attention. And, you know, I went wrong a few times. All right, I sure did. And uh, sometimes I tinked back and sometimes I just kind of, you know, made do by adding another stitch and you know another or decreasing or whatever and it turned out it turned out fine I don't think you can really see it um the little mistakes I made so I'd say yeah give it a go um it's really fun so that's my second finished object and I'll give you a little look at some of my works in progress the other thing I've been see doing and that you've probably seen is I'm doing a winter ranunculus in a little bit uh, different way. And this is the ranunculus, the updated ranunculus pattern. I've never made, I only made the old pattern where there was just one size. And in this one I'm doing size one, but I want it to be a bit smaller. And so I'm knitting it on a 5.5 needle. So um, yeah, and I think it's normally knit on a 6.5. But I've tried it on and it's starting to fit well. So I have this merino. It's just 100% uh, high twist merino. By these are um, dyed by Very Yarns Design in Dublin. And again, she will also ship internationally. And this is her colorway for Halloween, which actually 
She currently has 20% off of all her Halloween colorways, so check that out. Veryarnsdesign.com. And the Fine Leaf Fibers, I think she's on Etsy and also her own site, which is fineleaffibers.com, if you're interested in any of these yarns. And this is the colorway Abracadabra in both the Merino High Twist and in her Merino and or Mohair and Silk. So I've done the yoke part in the, the, the mohair held double, and I'm going down on the body now, and then I'm gonna do long sleeves. This is about how much I have left of the um, merino. And uh, I want it to be a little bit longer because it's gonna be for winter, because I'm also gonna add sleeves in, and I'm gonna do that in the lace weight. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about that. I think that's really pretty. And I'm also entering this in as a wild card in the, <laughs> that's just the alpacas, they make all kinds of noises, in the End AIDS Cal Fall 2022 run by Gary Nitz, Gary Rides. And he's got lovely prizes each time. And the last time I entered, I won a beautiful skein of Lola Bean yarn, which I've always wanted some of her yarn. And I'm going to, I have a project I want to do with that. So you'll see that yarn top pop up at some point. So yeah, so I'm entering that in as a wild card. And you can see his podcast and he explains about the cow. There's some beautiful things and beautiful patterns, or you can do a wild card. Okay, now the other, so I have two other works in progress that um, I'm doing. One is for the Curio Stitches cow that I'm running with Carrie of My Wool Mitten. And um, you've heard me probably talk about that on other podcasts. Last week was, we are having weekly winners, so basically all you have to do is work on any Curio Stitches pattern. On Ravelry, she's under her design, her name is Elspeth Willis, and her designs are under there, and she has her own site, CurioStitches.com. And so any pattern by her at all qualifies. She has just released the most awesome ebook. It's the Rune Casting Collections. You can't get it on, it was on Ravelry, but then Ravelry had a problem with it because some of the patterns in that ebook are also on Ravelry as singles, but they're different in the ebook, and there's a bonus pattern you can't get anywhere else in the ebook, which is for, it's an animal coat or vest from sizes up to pet rat to large dog. There are 15 sizes. It's absolutely amazing. And the ebook has beautiful, paintings original paintings by ellie and they're really really lovely so at the minute you can only get the ebook on her website but i gave that away as the first prize in the curious stitches knit along because we're doing the weekly prizes and again just you can enter by email uh, to mywoolmitten at gmail.com. She's taken the email entries, or you can enter via Instagram using the hashtag curiostitches.com. And we, one of us, it's either between, it's between myself, Carrie of My Wool Mitten, and then also Ellie of Curio Stitches. Um, we rotate, giving away a prize each week. The cowl is running until the 31st of December, 2022, and when there'll be a bigger grand prize. And there's a combination of pattern prizes and some physical prizes. Oh yes. And Bonnie of Meadowsweet Fibers Farms podcast is donating two really nice handmade physical prizes. And she's going to talk about that on her podcast. And she's going to give the prizes away there. Um, because she's in the U.S. and it makes no sense for her to ship them to one of us and then us do the giveaway and ship it to somebody else because, you know, shipping is expensive. So check out her podcast. I think she's got an episode going up this weekend. Um, she's going to give away a prize in October and in November. So really special. So I'll link that below as well. I'll link her website and when her podcast actually comes up, I'll try to link that actual video. So yeah, there are a lot of wonderful prizes happening. So all you have to do is, you know, get a Curio Stitches pattern. It can be a whip that you're already working on. Uh, the, the cowl has only been going a week. Um, and you don't have to finish. That's the thing. We just are trying to help this designer become better known. A small designer. She's got a really unique, lovely aesthetic. The ebook is absolutely amazing. There's just the extras in it. There are links for tutorial videos in it that she's made. Um, yeah, I think it's 
I think it's really worth it. It's the price of a book. Um, but there are five patterns in it. It's all the casting runes. She's painted each of the rune cards. So you will have like, you can print that off and make your own. It's a really lovely hand painted rune deck that you can cast your runes for to make the spread on your, your mitts. There's the mitts, the hat, the jumper and the vest and the socks. So yeah. So like if, if runes are the old kind of Viking, writing and they have a lot of meaning behind them they're the letters or the symbols and each one has like a myth and the legend associated with it so they're really fun so for people that are really into the vikings like that tv show these patterns are great for any gender um they're very size inclusive the the jumper goes up to at least a 65 inch bust i think it is so yeah so anyways check it out Take a picture of what you're working on. Use the Curio stash, Stitches hashtag or email Carrie at My Will Mitten and you'll be in for the draw. Yeah, so, so yeah, so I am working on one of our other patterns for that. I'm working on the El Has Rune Mitts, which is a little bit of easy cabling and a little bit of beadwork, but I haven't worked on it this, this past few weeks, um, so I won't show you. And the other thing that I'm working on I brought with me to work on that you haven't actually seen at all and I'll just show you now is I my, last year my advent set from Robin's Promise Yarn that followed along with the, the vintage edition of uh, the night before Christmas with the illustrations by oh, I said her name so many times and now I can't remember it anyway that I had this book as a child and so did Susan, who is the dyer of Robin's Promise Yarn, and followed along with the book. So what I'm doing with those mini skeins is I'm making a half and half wrap. And um, I think I probably should have cast on more stitches because I might have some of those mini skeins left over, in which case I'll just pick up stitches maybe and make a border. I'm really just kind of using it as a snuggly thing over the Christmas. So I'll just give you a quick quick look at that and you can see that I have um, started the other side of it but it's just been you know in a, in a bag for months and months and months since I cast it on in the winter and I just pick it up when I just need something that's just definitely garter stitch and I don't have a garter stitch project so that is hanging around with me um, for when I need a break uh, now, I'm going to show you how far I've gotten on my Stephen West. So, spoiler alert, this is just clue one, and I'm showing you now. And again, the yarns I'm using for this, my main color, my contrast color, are from Olan, in the colorway Burnish, and in North Star, and Olan is another Irish dyer, and now they have a little mini mill as well, but I don't, these weren't milled by them, spun by them. So this is where I am. I've got the first, I've got all the, you know, setup rows done and the first repeat. So that's it. And I dropped a stitch already somewhere, uh, you know, and it's not perfect because it's me, but yeah, I'm, it's, it's fun to knit. It'll take me a while. You have to do, I'll have to do 11 more repeats. So I need to do, I was figuring if I, I have to do um, sort of three a day to keep up at this point because I kind of lost a day yesterday and I only did half a repeat and I finished it this morning so and if I'm doing this video if I get that up so I probably will lose a day today so we'll see but I'd love to you know kind of finish up in time and I showed you before but I'll show you again quickly the lovely little stitch markers I'm using the um I don't know if that's the, all the little crystal ones are a set from Time Weaver that she made me as a present to match my project. So they're all different semi-precious stones. And then these are little um, hand-embroidered uh, woodland uh, items like acorns and mushrooms and all from um, Bobbles and Berries. And I'm giving some of those away also in the Curio Stitches Cow. Yeah. But definitely check it out because it's lovely. My contrast color is also going to be an Irish dyed yarn in the Spice colorway by um, Babbles Yarns. 
Grace O'Neill, who has her podcast here on YouTube also, and Time Weaver has a podcast on YouTube, and so does Oda Bobbles and Berries. Um, yeah. And I cut my yarn by an accident. Karen of um, A Yarn Tale podcast, she cut her yarn by an accident as well when, you know, she was taking up the ties. I don't know how I did it either. That's my knitting. Hey, that's definitely enough chatting for now. Talk to you later, friends. Come on, Ebony, do you want to say hi? Come here, girl. You want to say hi before I go? You want to say hi, hi? No, I don't want to say hi. She's chewing her cook.